Ik ga zelfs met die kunstenaar Diane Victor ontstaan hier in haar atelier. Jij hebt de uitstelling wat met de vinger boven. That's correct at Goodman Gallery in Johannesburg. Wat ook hoe komt die uitstelling? Um, well, the, it's two years exactly since the gallery organized an auction to raise funds to um, pay for the kidney transplant that was hopefully going to happen. At that point we didn't have the donor, we didn't know, but it's two years. It's amazing that two years have passed already in that time. And it's just kind of a celebratory small show in, in the backspace of the gallery. So is there a specific theme for the uitstelling? Well, the title of the show is One Pound of Flesh. Because that's really what the entire thing was about, is what you have to go through mm. for one pound of flesh and the ramifications of one pound of flesh. Um, and then I started looking at, um, the, the line itself comes from Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice, one pound of flesh but not one drop of blood. Mm -hmm. um, and then, because my brain tends to work rather slowly in sort of sense of osmosis, started off the idea of, yes, the kidney transplant. And to a large extent, you land up fighting with yourself. I mean, I'm doing drawings about shadow boxing, because you are shadow boxing. Um, my father taught me boxing when I was a child. That was the surrogate son that never existed. And his old boxing gloves look very much like damaged kidneys. They're old leather. And it's, it's sort of these kidneys that are strapped onto your hands that become the weapons, the things that you have to fight with. You fight your own demons, um, and they become your protection devices as well. So does that aspect to the show, and also, Again, going back to the text from, from the Shakespeare, um, at the cost of ruin. That, that, that's really what, at any price, getting your pound of flesh at the cost of ruin. Sure. And then, because a lot of my work often reflects the society I'm part of, looks at situations that are happening in our country at the moment, where people almost demanding a pound of flesh, despite the cost of ruin that might come with it. For all the reasons that are correct or incorrect. So there's that ramification that it parallels partly the experiences I went through to save my own life, but also the demands that a society places on itself to get its, its expectations, yeah, despite the, the risk of ruin that comes with it. But it's always the wonderful of your work. There's always more as one betekenis daarin. That means can see you don't go. There's no need to I think, but life works in levels. I mean, nothing is, 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 is sort of face value. And to do a whole body of work just about um, hunt for, you know, survival is, is something, but it's also very self, it's, it's too, it's, it's too self-centered. Mm. And one is part of a greater society. And I can't not, again, I, I think I said in an earlier discussion, switch my brain off. Everything that happens around one seeps into your, into your psyche. Mm. And literally, it, it is a fight for survival in our society at the moment. Mm. And people do need what, what they require to live. But the implications and the costs are often very high. Mm. And it, it's hard to mediate and negotiate around expectations and, and, and performance. The work that we have now is the one that you have told us about the box It literally is mm. boxing against oneself, yeah. shadow boxing. Yeah. Um, and then working with just the ash just straight ash, in fact ash of previously burnt drawings, taking my own drawings of things that I'd made in the past and burning them and drawing myself in the ashes of my own work. Okay. Um, yes, it is, it's shadow boxing, as I said, I think I mentioned earlier, the boxing gloves, my father's old boxing gloves, always, be, always remind me of kidneys. Mm. Um, and it, it's just fighting your own demons, fighting your own demons, fighting yourself. Most of one's life is spent actually fighting yourself shadow boxing against the things that you invent or see as threats that are often just not there yeah. and they're of your own volition, of your own making. Yeah. Um, that's also we're going towards towards the series. As I said earlier, there's a little bit of a cynical aspect to much of my work um, and this probably does respond to my donor who was a very apprehensive donor, who I think thought he was throwing himself into all manners of, of, of sort of life-threatening situations. Yeah. And, and he was, he took a great physical risk in doing what he did. And it is a rather cynical drawing of these two women contemplating the, um, the cuts that must be made. <laughs>
and, and I think he'd appreciate the humour. As again, a lot often the work has as more of a personal mm. reading as well, mm. but it is about kind of a falling from grace, um, but falling or falling into the hands of, of a medical world that yeah takes control of your life and you live with it. Yet the very interesting words on the other side of the atelier. Very early days on that drawing. Yes, yes. <laughs> and this this selfie stalker. Selfie sticks. I mean, I'm sure um, you guys would know there's a painting by Bruegel, Peter Bruegel, mm. Flemish artist from the 1500s. Wonderful painting of the parable of the blind. These, these sort of blind or visually impaired mm. men going down there. And one has fallen and the rest are also firmly attached to the one. They fall on top of each other. And it comes from traveling overseas where, where obviously the selfie stick is now a very popular adage. And seeing not always women, people wandering around, risking their necks, <laughs> so busy looking at themselves, these damn selfie sticks, like they become so self-obsessed. Um, I had to work with that, but also in a society where people in, in, in privileged positions do often become quite self-obsessed about petty things, where around them, the world is changing dramatically. Mm. And if you don't look up from your selfie stick, you are going to fall down and break your neck. I think that's it's, it's always the the other implication that comes into the drawing. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's humour to it and it's funny and we can laugh at it, but the implication is if you stop staring at your own navel and the fact that whatever small aspect of your life is imperfect, you don't notice that a huge percentage of our society is, is in, in a very bad situation. Yeah. And that one needs to look up from the selfie stick. Sure. Yeah. You had a conversation that we met you before in the last week in our Kunstenfeest. Ryan Victor was ons feestkunstenaar gewees, wat die wat het ook gemis het. Het ons gesels oor, oor die, die rook wat jy op glas gedoen het en dan stikkend gestamp het op die, op die fancy proof. Dit, dit vorm ook deel van die uitstaan. Yes, that, that's certainly going to become, it's one of the works for the show. Um, it's, I work with existing windows that I source from scrapyards, from wreckers yards. Um, and it really just looks at much of our lives is spent looking through windows. Often windows with burglar bars. And I enjoy working on glass, I enjoy working with smoke on the glass. It's a very ghostly, vulnerable mm. image that you're working with. Um, but the idea of shattering the glass, which is really part of where our society is about, the martyrs that occurred less than a week ago, um, although they were very controlled, thankfully so. There have been many marches through the city centre that haven't. And the amount of vandalism and the idea of a broken window um, it is really part of our reality. It's the threats that we all live with. We have this veil of glass that we look through to the world outside and, and the shattering that occurs. I'm also, of course, interested in the beauty of the broken yeah. and how often things have to be broken to be more interesting. Where is the outstanding for this? The exhibition is at Goodman, um, Goodman Johannesburg on Janssmeitz Avenue. It's in the small space at the back. It's not the main show. As I say, it's a celebratory show. And it would be wonderful if anyone wanted to go and see it. Or go on their website and have a look at images. What?